<laughs> so with a movie like uh, Who Invited Charlie, it is, it kind of found the sweet spot of coming out right when we've all kind of gotten over not wanting to watch quarantine and COVID movies and have embraced it. And the movie itself isn't just about having to quarantine, it's about friendship. And so for you as an actor, what made you want to be a part of this and tell this story? I think it really, I don't know, it spoke to me on a lot of levels. My, my, um, my very good friend, Nick Scott, wrote the movie. Mm-hmm. And I've been friends for 20 years. And during COVID, he was in Virginia. And we were here, and we were constantly in contact and telling each other stories about, you know, what was going on. And uh, so he wrote the script based pretty closely to his experience living with another family in Virginia. And I just thought it was, it was really funny. And it was like, yeah, I mean, we, we can all relate to that sort of that closed in those, those first few months of the pandemic. And then beyond that, it just had a lot of heart. Like the, the, the characters that he created, specifically Phil and Charlie, reminded me so much of like the Steve Martin, John Candy dynamic in Planes, Trains, Automobiles, mm-hmm. or Richard Dreyfus and Bill Murray in What About Bob? And, you know, these are movies that are hugely influential for me because, I mean, that, that's, that's really what I was when I was growing up. And those are the guys that I really wanted to emulate, those, those actors that were known to be funny. But if you looked closely, they were also phenomenal dramatic actors. Mm-hmm. And the movie sort of had uh, the, the story that we were telling had opportunity for all of that. And that's, like you said, it was, it was sort of the sweet spot. And those don't really come along very often. Yeah, and it is kind of, sorry, uh, it, it was kind of a return in a lot of ways to like a straight man, crazy man comedy and because it's been a while since it's been that, not in a bubble, but that specific of like, Phil is the straight man, Charlie's the crazy man and their energies weren't together because of it. Yeah. Um, and you've kind of made a career of being a straight man and things, but doing it in a way that is, both we know what your energy you're bringing to the role and but we know it's going to be good regardless of anything else going on in scenes and movies and so is that something that you you enjoy like knowing that people are like yeah I'm going to go in this movie and know that Reed Scott's going to just deliver these lines in a way that I'm going to be cackling and it is just dry as all can be yeah yeah I really enjoy that that that, that's my sense of humor you know and I've been Certainly, I, I recognize I've been very lucky to sort of have, have, you know, been involved in projects that the characters I get to play um, either were already sort of written with a, a very similar sort of sense of humor or like on Veep where we're so, you know, very much encouraged to be so collaborative and really cultivate our characters, you know, um, not just personality, but like the way they speak, what they find funny, their little idiosyncrasies. And it's... It's great. It, it, it's the space that I feel the most comfortable. You know, um, I never thought of myself as particularly very funny, really. I mean, I always felt I had a good sense of humor, but when I first started to work, you know, 25 years ago, I kept on getting cast in comedies and I really wondered why. <laughs> and I was sort of told by a casting director and then a couple of people that I worked with, it's like, well, you're, you're so earnest. You really commit. And I think I committed to the bit because I was so terrified. I'm like, I'm not funny. I thought if you were a comedic actor, you were also a stand-up, because that was, you know, that was the height of the sick, yeah. you know, in like the late '90s. And I was like, well, I'm not a, I'm not a stand-up, so I better just sort of, you know, fall back on my, you know, my, my theater school training and sort of like just, just commit to the bit. And it, and and, for, and I, I, I guess it kind of worked. And so I, I. I found that the the characters that I could really deliver the funny on were the ones that were also pretty earnest and just sort of like kind of straight ahead. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, like Leslie Nielsen, I think yeah. is the greatest of all time. And he never thought he was funny. And he's one of the funniest guys ever. He committed to the bit. He committed. Time. And then I was also lucky enough that along the way, I got to work with such incredible people, you know, um, all the amazing, like Jim Gaffigan and the amazing improvising cast on My Boys. Um, Laura Linney, who's very funny, surprisingly, like you wouldn't think, but she is very funny. Obviously, Julia and everyone in Veep. And I, you know, I was, I, I was taking class on those guys. You know, Matt Walsh, 
Like I studied Matt Walsh in college. Yeah. So I was, I was like stealing bits here and there and then learning how to sort of like broaden, you know, my comedy chops a little bit. And now it's a space that I, I, I love. I, now I always look for the funny. How do you find, some, how do you take something no matter what it is? And like, there's gotta be a little bit of humor in there someplace. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. To derail just lately, I, I love Laura Lenny. She came to my college uh, for our theater department because that's where her dad had gone. Yeah. And she like worked on checkoff scenes with us. And like the notes she was giving us were, I like was losing my mind. So I was like, well, it's Laura Linney, but also it's very, funny. and I was like trying to act and it was not working, but uh, she's, she's genuinely hilarious. She's awesome. And she's like such a good person, such a warm mm -hmm. person, such a generous person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's awesome. But you mentioned kind of finding the humor and everything. And one of my favorite scenes of this whole movie is when, um, your son just gets so angry that he's like, I'm going to drive this car into the ocean. And it's like, my brain as an adult is like, you cannot drive a car into the ocean. It doesn't work like that. Like the car is going to go into the ocean. And then seeing this kid realize it, like the, that whole scene is funny, but also just traumatizing in a way, because he's so upset. And you're like, I feel so bad for you, but also like you did just try and drive a car into the ocean and think that that was going to work but you guys all play it in such a way that is funny and dramatic and emotional all rolled into one ball. And so when you're approaching specific scenes like that and knowing like, okay, I have all of these elements that I'm working with, what is your process to kind of breaking it down and knowing exactly like how you want to go about that instance? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was a particularly challenging scene because it, it's kind of, it's almost like four scenes in one isn't it? You know, there, there's mm -hmm. the, the action sequence, which starts off kind of funny, but then you're worried about the kids. So there, there, mm -hmm. there's, when you deliver, you know, the emotional payload of that, of wondering like, you know, if your child's going to be hurt, but then also trying to keep it light because it is a bit of, you know, an adventure and you don't want to put anybody like in too much harm's way. Then there's like the mini scene between father and son where they blow up. Then there's the scene between husband and wife mm -hmm. where truth of this affair comes out on both sides mm -hmm. and there's this scene between phil and charlie which you know you've you've blown up my family and mm -hmm. he throws it right back at me it's sort of like you got everything you wanted at my expense and what do i have and so we really sort of broke it down into those pieces and then thought about okay how do you just honor and service each of those mini scenes within the scene and then trusting that we can shift from one to the other. And we gelled as a cast so quickly. So we were all like of this hive mind, like right away. So I think we, it, it didn't take us longer to be like, okay, you know, to transition from this emotion to this emotion, to this emotion, to this emotion. Um, also, because the, the, it was just written so well, it was pretty clear to us. But, you know, then you have the practical challenge of like, we're shooting it at sunrise. So you don't have a lot of time to mess around. This is an indie film. It's like, like you know, we got one sunrise. You know? <laughs> You're not coming back. No, we're not coming back. <laughs> we're not in it's freezing cold. It's like, we might not even get another day that's sunny. It might be cloudy. So it's like, it's got to happen today. So we spent, you know, probably the night before talking it through, getting it ready, being prepared, and then letting the sort of excitement of, you know, of, of those scenes just kind of drive us forward. But um we never wanted to lose sight that there is comedy within all of this stuff. Cause that's it. I mean, to me, you know, no matter how emotional, even a moment in our regular everyday life is when you look back on it, you can probably find it's like, that was, that was funny. That time that I broke down crying over like, whatever, it's sort of like, yeah, you could, if you, if you think about it this way, it, it might be kind of funny. So how can we pepper those, those little moments in, um, you know, Adam is such a great actor and great improviser. We just riffed, you know, and, and he and I go back, you know, 15 years as friends. Mm -hmm. So it was really easiest for us to sort of, to find that. But, you know, and Jordana is so good. You know, again, she, she reminds me of a Julia. She's so funny. People don't realize how funny yeah. Jordana is. And she can just deliver. She's a wonderful actress to work opposite. And then Peter Dagger was just, you know, like, we're so stoked that we found Peter Dagger because he's just an incredible actor. And, and everyone was just down to play. And that's really what it took. We just played. 
Yeah. When I spoke to him, it was wild how I realized he had Ben Schwartz energy, like in the way he looks and talks. I was like, this is just reminding me of like a little baby Ben Schwartz and like a crazy, I was just like, does Ben Schwartz have a kid? <laughs> just like put him in acting with a different name. Uh, but with a movie like this, uh, it is exciting that it's coming out now. Cause I think more people are going to embrace it. If it, at this point in COVID and the world versus like two years ago. And so what do you hope audiences take away when they get to see uh, who invited Charlie? I, I hope they're uplifted, you know, really like, like my favorite thing is to see a movie in the theater with a packed audience, you know, full audience and, and that collective energy that comes mm -hmm. and, you know, movies are back. People are going to the theater again, not in the same way that they have, you know, in years, mostly because of COVID and a variety of other things, you know, the way the industry's changed. But the reason to go to the movies for so long has been, you know, large spectacle superhero movies, mm -hmm. you know, horror movies, which I love horror movies. And mm -hmm. I think that horror and comedy are kind of like linked. They're the two genres that really elicit this physical response. You know, like you're scared, your body tenses up and you... <laughs> You know, and when you go see a comedy, your body relaxes and you laugh and nothing is better than getting that collective energy. So I hope people find that this is like, this is a vacation for the mind, you know, mm -hmm. go to the theater, spend an hour and a half surrounded by other people who are all vibing the way you're vibing and just, just having a laugh. And, and hopefully you see a little bit of yourself in there, you know, in, in these characters and these situations. I mean, we've all been through this, literally everyone in the world shut in in this way so hopefully people can relate um and yeah i just i want people to have a good time at the theater again i miss it so i i, and I know a lot of other people do too yeah i mean i i same uh but yeah i can't wait for people to see it adam pally did call me charlie because i said i got trapped at my mom's for seven months in a different uh, state and he was like oh so you're charlie and i was like i guess i was for charlie uh oh. <laughs> but thank you so much for talking with me today I really appreciate it um, and I love all your work so I can't wait to see what comes next thank you so much all right, have a great one yeah. bye